Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with the cattle market summary for the week ending January the 11th where it's back to business a uh, full week of uh, all the auctions open and uh, regular trade uh, slaughter every day and uh, just back to, to regular business kind of nice to get back in the groove and and start out 2019 on a full slate seemed like all there was to talk about anywhere you went was a uh, uh, President Trump trying to get the uh, wall built on the southern border which uh, any logical person uh, knows that we need and uh, him trying to get those uh, Democrats to build fences about like a ranch foreman trying to get a bunkhouse full of cowboys to build fence they just don't want to do it and and I, I think that uh, a lot of them want it but uh, they know good and well that it'll just be another campaign promise fulfilled by him and they probably are smart enough to know that it will probably work uh, just like uh, deregulation and tax cuts have worked also and and there'll be no way to beat him come 2020 so it's all come to politics but on the cattle market uh, we're back into full swing of things let's look at the board for the week February live cattle futures Monday was up $1.27 Tuesday up $2.10 Wednesday down a half a dollar, Thursday up seven, Friday up a dime, with live cattle futures for February contract uh, ending the week at 124.97. April's at 126.37, but then you drop off to June, you go down nine dollars and seventeen cents. That's the most it's been, all the way down to 117.20. January feeder cattle Monday was up a dollar ten, Tuesday up 162. Wednesday down 80, Thursday down 7 cents, and Friday down 62. Uh, with January feeder cattle ending the week at 146.12. March closed uh, the week at 144.90. Your fat cattle trade, I'll tell you what, the uh, feeders really dug in. Hardly any trade to speak of at all, uh, even in the northern plains anywhere, uh, all the way until Friday afternoon. And, uh, and we started seeing some trade in the Northern Plains at 197, which is $2 higher than last week. And then after that 197 was established and that was the market, then your Southern Plains and Northern Plains, everybody pretty much was able to get the 124, which is a full dollar higher than last week uh, in, on your live sales. Uh, there was a, a, a long string of cattle in the, in the Northern Plains that bring 122 and a half. That'd be steady. Uh, likely those cattle were carrying a lot of tag uh, as uh, they should, should have gained some ground there but didn't. But uh, pretty good market. Uh, your, your packers are starting to lose some of their margin now. They're still making more money on every one that they kill than, than most of your feeders are on every one they finish. But a lot of your cattle feeders are, are breaking even and some of them making some money on some cattle that they've been really bought right and, and the weather didn't affect them too bad. But your packers, uh, they're, they're falling off of that 250 ahead, getting down in there uh, where they're afraid that uh, before long they may uh, just be kind of scratching out uh, wash but uh, they don't like to do that uh, last year last calendar year there were very few weeks that they weren't well over their margin and and they like to keep it that way but look at uh, where their margin comes from box beef cutout values were lower on the week uh, if you look at your average trade for last week on choice cuts 213.70 down 205 select cuts uh, average trade for the week 207.20 down two dollars and forty five cents choice select spread of six and a half dollars and uh, and a really good movement now that's the good thing the, the likely when the price is down just like you'd figure you, you get a lot more uh, dispersal of the supplies and, and a lot of your outfits were needing to reload there after the holidays and things were really slow but 669 loads of cuts grinds and trimmings and that is heavy heavy volume but we started out the week uh, on your feeder cattle with a, a Barron's article uh, in, uh, out of New York City that uh, a lot of your investors read that are outside of the industry and they said that, uh, that they thought that the cattle futures had a good chance of being 15% higher here to start out the new year. Uh, and I don't know how much of an effect that was, but it was interesting that your board on, on fats and feeders were up both on Monday, Tuesday pretty strong. 
out of nowhere and, and I think that probably had something to do with it and it may have just been your industry guys uh, thinking that some of the uh, the people out of the industry and your money managers were going to get in after that article come out but it was a it was a very positive article and and uh, and uh, most of us are thinking that 2019 is going to be a good year yes we're still getting through uh, a big calf crop that we had last spring and once we get through those uh, with the big numbers of uh, heifers that we slaughtered in 2018 and beef cows that we slaughtered in 2018 and we can't get the final tally on that because uh, because of the government shutdown but your your uh, spot market reporters uh, with USDA they were deemed uh, necessary here since the last uh, the shutdown and so we are getting our regular market reports uh, like our mandatory price reporting and things like that but just not collecting that actual data from the plants yet but uh, we had a southern storm come across late this week uh, it's hard telling how big of a deal it's going to be uh, they are expecting a, a big snow in the St. Louis area uh, not a lot of feedlots or anything around that part of the country there are some farmer feeders not far away from there in, in Illinois and a few up there in northern Missouri but uh, they did get some uh, rain and sleet and things in, in Kansas feed yard areas and they had just started to start drying out a little bit and uh, that's probably going to likely make them muddy again but probably not as bad as what they were before Christmas and it didn't look like uh, Nebraska or those northern plains lots got hit too bad so that's lucky but uh, we thought as we got into the new year that these feeder cattle market would, would really take off because uh, everybody had been kind of uh, shut down for a while and needing some cattle and all these positive things coming about for 2019 but we just underestimated how much those poor lot conditions and the, the mud everywhere really really uh, kind of weighed on the market and and it wasn't a wreck by any means but it was lower and, and everybody just thought we'd come out of the gate stronger but just uh, the outlets got plugged up with mud and 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 a lot of your feedlots, even though they had uh, they had gained some some room, you know, over the holidays and things by by moving cattle through the system and no sales to speak of anywhere and hardly any cattle being shipped direct, that uh, we'd have more room in those feedlots. But whenever they are so muddy, they like to give those cattle a little bit of room, try to give them a place to a dry place to lay down if they can, and and uh, it's just uh, really weighed on the market. Uh, some information that we did get uh, here. Uh, this week and I like to talk about it because I dwell on the vertical integration and especially the uh, the basically the elimination of negotiated fat cattle trade which everything is based on you know all of our, our formulas all of our uh, grid cattle everything is based off of your cash market your feeder cattle market ends up being based off the cash market the whole world revolves around the cash market that is is just dwindling and dwindling and dwindling down to nothing but uh, we had the last couple of years we had started gaining on that a little bit last year or the end of 2017 your five area feeding region had 26.8 percent of the total fat cattle volume sold in a negotiated cash basis I know that sounds stupid that that's good but uh, yeah that's the tail wagging the dog basically uh, nearly 75% of your cattle were priced off of what 25% were bringing. But uh, we're still in that. But in 2017, it's 26.8, and we thought we were kind of gaining on that. Well, come out for 2018 and only 26.1, so we lost 7 tenths of a percent there on, uh, on your negotiated cash, and most of it all in the Southern Plains. As we saw the consolidation, uh, Caprock uh, selling out their feedlots, and of course, uh, whoever they sell those to are, are not going to be selling negotiated. They're going to be sending those to to uh, XL plants, and and uh, you know we also saw uh, you know the selling of Five Rivers, which didn't really change anything, but it's just just more and more consolidation. Bartlett sold out. Uh, they were known to sell some cattle uh, once in a while on a different method, and now they're uh, with Green Plains and and not doing that anymore, but. Texas was at the 2017 negotiated cash of 9.3 percent. Now that may sound terrible, but in 2015 it was 2.6 percent of the cattle. 
Less than 3% of the cattle in 2015 sold negotiated cash. They were all on some type of a formula. And uh, so we'd, we'd gotten back up in 2017 to 9.3%, hoping to break 10, but uh, 2018 we backtracked down to 6.2%. Kansas, 19.3% uh, in 2018, down from 21.9%. But Nebraska was a little bit better, up to 43%. Uh, and that's where we see the best of our negotiated trade is in the Northern Plains, Nebraska up to 43%, and Iowa well over 50% of their total volume of finished cattle selling on a negotiated basis, which is healthy for our markets. But I've said it before, a lot of your farmer feeders in Iowa are really the, the least uh, set up to to sell negotiated cash they don't have cattle ready every week they're kind of out of the market they don't have good contact with the packers and that's exactly the way that they like it because they can get taken advantage of a lot of times and that happened week after week after week in 2018 they would get enough cattle uh bought around here and there up in the northern plains that it would it would keep the southern plains from from being able to gain any money even when we were in a week where it looked like we needed to gain some but talk about our feeder cattle markets again heavy 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 receipts almost 370,000 head in reported markets and that's that's uh, the biggest uh, run we've had in the sales for about six months and and uh, Pretty darn good. You look at Joplin, they had 14,000 head of cattle. Both Oklahoma National Stockyards and OKC West had around 11,000 head of cattle. And, and all your big high volume sales had huge sales. And it uh, would have been even bigger if we hadn't had the wet conditions around. And uh, sometimes some of those cattle are a little bit hard to get out. But uh, you look at your real time index to end the week uh, on Cattle Market Central at 143.68. That compares to before Christmas, 145.47. Uh, so down about $1.79 since before Christmas. I know we had some markets last week, but it wasn't well tested and our big sales, most all of them were shut down for two weeks. So we're gonna once again do a two week trend there in your cash feeders. Compared to two weeks ago, the last fully tested market, your feeder calves with very few yearlings around, some short yearlings maybe, but feeder cattle, which are mostly just calves, one to three dollars lower and that market kind of faded later off in the week the first day of the week uh like oklahoma national stockyards they were some higher you know guys were pretty aggressive for cattle and and maybe just your order buyers were aggressive for cattle and they were just uh you know they loved to buy cattle and they probably pushing harder than what their order really warranted but uh they bought some cattle and, and it was a little better early in the week but even by tuesday on those big runs it just started fading and fading and fading by the end of the week we were sure one to three dollars lower than the last fully tested uh, market which was two weeks before now your lighter calves it's hard to believe when it's a january and it's cold a lot of places of course we're having a mild winter around but uh, guys are buying grass calves and and guys are full-fledged buying grass calves right now uh, especially in the Midwest, uh, buying calves for the Flint Hills, for the Osage region. Uh, they, are, they are putting those cattle together because they, they want uh, local uh, cattle and they, they really like to have those native top cattle and it's hard to get enough of those put together. So buying those four and five weights, they got to get in and start buying those now. That way they can kind of get them uh, ready to go and by the time uh, that early spring turnout comes, They'll be raring to go with with uh, some big strings of cattle to turn out for summer to to have make those into summer yearlings and and that's your best market and that's what everybody shoots for. But look at some individual quotes. Uh, the angels, good friends of mine, John, Justin, Angel, Luther, Angel, uh, and uh, they've got that sale barn going on all cylinders in Eastern Missouri Commission Company in Bowling Green, Missouri. You can throw a rock to Illinois and you don't have to throw it very hard. 59 head of 666 pound steers in Bowling Green bring 157.75 on Friday. Magnus Livestock in Huron, South Dakota, 67 head of 690 pound steers bring 154.60. But a top quote at the end of the week on a Friday, way out west, uh, Merle Haggard Commission Company, I call it Shasta Livestock Auction Yard in Cottonwood, California. Ellington Peak and company out there 
A uh, very impressive sale on this load of 624 pound steer calves bring 167. That's a look at your week's markets uh, from a home DV auction office here in Canyon, Texas. We'll talk to you next week.